welcome back to the channel. I thought I would do a little discussion today, uh, mainly around the idea of how my viewing habits and collecting and watching habits have changed over the calendar year of 2021, maybe going back into parts of 2020 as well. I, like many of you, have... Well, I'm probably buying a rate slightly more than I'm watching it. It's only got worse this year because... Because I've changed how I've been approaching some of my watching habits. It may be evidenced in how I'm making the videos, it may not. But it did occur to me that one of the real great joys and one of the great things about collecting Blu-rays in the way that I and many of you do is that we get these, these fully featured releases that act like a bit of a film school. I hear an awful lot of people talking about, I'm just getting into this director, I'm getting into this genre. And that's very much at the core of what a lot of us do. We want to find out more about these people and see the common threads and links between between the films. I see it in Nazar and Prod's videos where he links films together or topics together. I see it in Solid Ronan, he does his director series where he talks from about every film that he can find a physical release for from a certain... A set of directors or a director or filmmaker and you can even see it in the way that the collections are put together by many boutique blu-ray labels where they will collect box sets together and present them all together this is a thing that many film fans seem to be interested in and i am no different but in this never-ending push of having more content coming through the door that i'm actually watching add into that cinema now add into that you know streaming services and you always feel behind. But was I really getting the value out of the discs that I was? And at a certain point, I would say probably not. So I tried to make a concerted effort this year to well, get more out of the releases that, that I was buying. Especially because my interests this year seem to have went more down the road of films that maybe aren't as narratively strong or more out heart house driven. I've probably talked about more second run, for instance, this year and BFI this year than, than I've done in previous years. And it definitely is an area of interest for me with film making that runs alongside this other side of my film journey this year, which has been that I have a 13 year old daughter that's starting to get interested in cinema. And she likes to go to the cinema. And of course her films that she likes to go and see or talk about are the big action blockbusters. They are the likes of the horror films. She, but she is starting to genuinely enjoy and talk about the contrasts and links that go through them. I've started to watch or do a rewatch of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and haven't seen, I've seen all of the films before she's seen most of them, but been able to go back to start and for her to see narratively how dense some of that stuff is, is actually a really great joy of mine. In, in, in experiencing that weather and, and also for being a rewatch of those films myself. So while I can be a lover of art house cinema, I can also appreciate how dense and how elongated and, and maybe how stupid in some ways some of the action superhero movies are. They're all three to four star movies in my, in my in my view, they're all enjoyable. I enjoy going to the cinema and, and passing my time and watching that and discussing it with my daughter afterwards because like many other people, and the reason that I make this these videos as well, is to create a conversation with people about the films that I've watched. Not everything has to be high art. Not everything is as enjoyable. That's the same level. Having a mixture for me is what makes this all worthwhile. So this year, I'm going to be logging through this year. I'm recording this on the 8th of August. I'll probably throw this up soon afterwards. I have watched 124 films. Now, some of those are on streaming. Some of those are rewatches. Some of those are in the cinema. But what I've tried to do is rinse a lot of the content that's put on these discs more. Try and read all the booklets. Read all the booklets as in listening to... An interview with the director or something else that's going on trying to get into the nuts and bolts about what a certain film is and why some people have reference for it i'll give you an example i've been making my way through this weekend uh the bfi release of radio one now radio one as a as a film isn't much of a narrative film it really 
Lucy tells the story of a DJ who goes to find out the nature of his brother's death and the circumstances and the people that were involved with his brother when he died. Set on the background of being a road movie and also on what is very loosely a showcase for some of the artists and music that were around at that time. It feels like a bit of a dream project for, for somebody and it comes across like that. Now on first watch there are parts of it that are narratively slow there doesn't seem to be much happening it's very stylized but there's a reason that a lot of people were excited about this coming out and sure enough the BFI disc has that it has the booklet BFI always do three essays on them and I haven't made my way through that yet but I'm still like I say I'm still working my way through this disc but once I finished watching it I was left with that that feeling of well I, I did enjoy that but the bits that I enjoyed maybe are not as obvious or as far reaching. I mean, there's a, there's a, a scene where he picks up a, a character uh, who has served some terms in Northern Ireland in the Valencer. And, you know, I found that because I can relate to it, obviously, through location and geography and history. I can relate to that well. Where, and Sting's in it for a while as a, as a petrol station attendant with a guitar, etc. There are... There are elements of it that are very enjoyable but as a whole I struggled with what was making this good and on the disc there's an interview with a film writer uh, Jason Wood who basically spends 54 minutes going through about why this film is one of his favorite films of all time where it started from Genesis uh, and where it went there's a selected scene commentary from the writer and director Chris Pettit as well uh, an interview with Chris Pettit and the producer for 42 minutes. There's a remix of the film did, uh, where there's a digital video essay with a use of a slightly different soundtrack that somebody put together, which is wonderful as well. And then there are a couple of short films, uh, some of public information, etc. that's on it. This is such a fully featured disc. But going back to the the 50 odd minute interview with somebody that was just a huge fan of this film, haven't watched that. It made me want to go back and watch that film again and pick up some of the things that he thought were he thought was fascinating. He put a bit more background into how the film was made, with the genesis of it, etc. And, you know, the whole thing fitting together gives me more enjoyment out of the disc than just the film itself. And I do hear a lot of people say things like, well, the film's, the film's key. Why do you collect everything sight unseen? Or why do you blind buy all of that kind of stuff? And if the film was key, I would never buy a physical release. I would buy it digitally. I'd buy it for a fraction of the price if all I wanted to see was a good print of the film. Digitally, if you buy an Apple, if a new format comes up, they usually upgrade it automatically. It's the way to go. I might even rent it. I might even stream it. But if I'd have done that with Radio 1, I wouldn't have enjoyed that film. That film would not be in the memory as much as it was. And it does slow down my film making. I'm probably about 100 films down on what I was at this time last year as far as films. But I enjoyed getting my teeth into a lot of these releases. And it does make me look at when pur I'm purchasing things to say, I don't just want a vanilla release of something. I can rent, I can stream, I can do something like that if that's all I'm getting. What are the releases? that are expounding upon the themes that are in this, give me a sense of the environment at the time or the characters that were involved in making this. And that has been some of the changes that I've made this year. It's made me question some of the blanket purchase decisions that I've been making for the why. There are some companies that do this an awful lot better than other ones. It makes me think about whether I need more art cards that just sit in the case that kind of thing so if you can relate to any of that or you want to question some of that or talk about other things around this idea or have ideas that you'd like me to expand upon let me know down in the comments making these short videos like this is kind of the whole point of doing this in the first place and uh really makes it all worth the effort of sitting down in front of the camera a bit of it editing uploading it doing the thumbnails etc for thanks very much for watching if you made it this far and i'll catch you soon take care